welcome to uh, the Back to Basics first session on planning a programme. Um, this is the first of a series of three sessions to help you with all the important things that you need to know to plan your youth and children's ministry um, in church. It's brought to you by the Children, Youth and Family team in the Diocese of Swansea and Brecon. I'm Rachel Bunting and I'm based in the Swansea area deanery um, and with me today I will let Claire and Sean introduce themselves. Hi I'm Claire and I cover Greater Brecon deanery. Hi I'm Sean and I cover the Bilson Radnor area of the diocese. And also on the team we have um, another Sean, Sean Parkhouse, who covers the Gower area of the diocese. Um, our contact details will be available later on in the presentation. Um, so if you do have any questions as it goes through, then feel free to get in touch with any of us um, whenever you like. I'm going to start sharing my screen so that you can see what we are doing and hand over to Sean to begin the session for us today. So uh, welcome to Back to Basics. Uh, the purpose of these training sessions is just really to give you a chance to uh, revamp what you already know and to just a bit of information that maybe has uh, gone by the wayside during the pandemic. Um, our planning session today is just about planning a programme um, and all the things that you're going to need to know in order to do that. So... Who are you planning this program for? That's obviously the, one of the most important things to ask yourself. There's no point doing something for uh, toddlers if the stuff that the resources that you are planning are not age appropriate. Um, so what age group are you looking at? You might be looking at toddlers, you might be looking at uh, preteens, you could be looking at comprehensive age children or even um, primary schools. Um, or you might be looking at the whole range who knows but it's important to have an idea about what age those children are going to be um, how many children as well depending on your area you may have a large group of children you might have a smaller group so it's important to think about that as part of that planning process um, and what pre-existing knowledge those children might have so if they are non-church children then they may not have any biblical knowledge at all but at the same time, if those children are um, ch children that come to your church on a regular basis, then they may have some biblical knowledge and knowledge of church. So at this point, we're going to ask you to pause the video and take two minutes to answer some of the questions that we've popped down for you and anything else that you might be able to think of as well. What resources do you have? So. As part of this, you need to consider your strength. Um, you may have volunteers who are more artistic and are able to do the more arty part or the crafts with, within your program. You may have others who are more theological and can do the biblical knowledge parts of your program. So um, you may have other resources as well. You may have physical resources or you may have, you may have to also think about where that program is going to be held. Um, so again, we'd like to ask you to pause the video here and take five minutes to have a think about uh, some of these things. Okay, so the next part of your planning needs to be about your the length that your programme is going to run for, both on a maybe a weekly basis, so each session, and also um, how long that's going to run. Is it going to be a continuous thing? Is it going to be... Um, something like a course where you only run it for six weeks or something like that. Um, how much of that time are other your volunteers going to be able to give up? So if they're only going to be able to give up some, you know, six weeks, then there's no point considering uh, running it for longer. But equally, if they're able to give up a weekly, a weekly time, then it's probably best to plan for a regular meeting. Um, you also need to consider other uses of the building and, and other things that are happening. You also need to consider um, what sort of an area you are from. So are the children in your area going to be able to get to and from your programme with ease or do you need to organise transport? 
And if so, what's that transport going to look like? Um, have I missed anything else there, girls? Uh, just to say, if you're planning something um, that's midweek for uh, school age children, that if you um, if you know that the bus doesn't get in from school until four o'clock, then probably starting your programme at four o'clock might be pushing it a little bit. So have a think about how long children might need to come home, um, you know, get changed, what they need to do before they come back out to your programme. Um, if you're in an area where children have to travel quite large distances to get to school, that might be later. Whereas if the, your church is just outside the primary school, maybe you could consider doing something that actually ties in with the time that they leave school, maybe a, a homework club or something so that the children are already coming past your building um, at the right time. It's really important as well to do some research about your local area. If you think about running a group, perhaps on a Monday evening, and you start off and no one turns up, you're wondering why people aren't come. It could be because of your advertising or it could be because there are five other groups running on that evening and you've got too much competition. So it's really important to do a little bit of research before setting dates and times. Okay, um, so shall we move on? So something else that's really important to consider is what you're trying to achieve as part of your uh, group, your programme. Um, there are a few different options with regards to this. There's a discipleship group, which suggests that the children that are coming to your group do have some Christian knowledge and have potentially given their lives to Christ, that they are Christians that come regularly to Sunday school, church, or whatever else it is that you may hold for them. Um, you also have the opportunity to potentially run an evangelistic group, could, nearly couldn't say that then, an evangelistic group, which um, would perhaps suggest that there is le less knowledge there with regards to the biblical knowledge in church. Um, so children that maybe haven't been given any chance to become part of a church in the past. Um, you may also, as a starting point, want to run a group which has no outwardly Christian values, maybe a, maybe a prayer at the end or something like that, but perhaps it's a very, very, very small amount of Christian uh, input to start with, just until you get to know these children. Anything you want to add, ladies? No, nope, that's all good. Okay, so I've got some examples um, later on, if that's the route you want to go down, there's some programmes that you could run um, that have a, a sort of different uh, drawing point, but then have show you some ways of incorporating um, some Christian elements in a, a very gentle way. Yeah. Okay. So uh, where do I start is the next part of our program tonight. Um, it's uh, simplest. It's simplest and beneficial to children to have a similar routine each week where you can change the elements according to your theme. This provides continuity and stability and helps you to know how to build your session. So there's an example timetable there for a toddler group. Um, what I would say is you don't need to be um, stuck to a timetable as, as rigidly as, as that one, perhaps. It may just be that um, you always have a Bible story. You always have certain elements within your programme. Um, girls yeah just that that one's there as an example um for if you um are starting a group and you've been faced with what well, we've got this amount of time but i've got no idea how to start filling that time then breaking the time up um really helps to be able to to fill it if you're a little bit worried um but I would also say as well that, again, don't worry if things overrun or if things don't take as long as they should do. Um, the way that these groups work with children, even with the best one in the world, things never take the amount of time that you think they're going to. Um, particularly if you know if you plan to do a craft for 10 minutes, naturally it takes 20 minutes. Then having the ability to also be flexible, um, say, right, we're going to spend less time on that one or we can cut this out altogether. Um, is absolutely fine as well. It's just to kind of help you to understand um, how to break the time down so that it's easier for you to, um, to plan your programme as you get started. Yeah. And you will find as well that um, as you get to know the children, you'll be able to have a better idea of how long certain things run for. 
And it's always good to have a few games or songs sort of up your sleeve, so to speak, that you can just use as a time filler. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at long-term planning next. And this is actually gonna save you a lot of stress in the long-term. If you can plan out for a term or for a number of weeks, then you won't have to run around at the last minute trying to think at games, crafts or activities or ensuring that you've got volunteers on board to run your club or group. So as we say, it's easier to plan a programme. You can build on special occasions or seasonal events. These are always quite popular gives you time to order in special equipment or resources if you're doing crafts or other activities and you can also invite guests if you're having someone to come in who has a specialism about something. Makes it easier for volunteers to be involved in the planning session, they can actually really own what you're actually trying to achieve and if you have to put in a rotor in place and different things like that then it's great to have everything planned out and everyone knows exactly what they're meant to be doing. And as well as that, you have the opportunity to run a theme over a number of weeks if you want to delve deeper into a particular story or a different um, project or activity. So sometimes um, people are looking to plan for a holiday club and um, it can seem like quite a scary task if it's something that you've never tried to achieve before. Sham Park House has actually run a number of holiday clubs and um, we have resources available um, to run your own holiday club on different themes. I think Rachel's done The Greatest Showman and um, other things like that. So you've got a sample here on, on the side, um, but you need to ensure that you build in time for the children to have their breaks, um, go to the toilet, play active games and have time to socialise. A holiday club also usually includes um, a longer period over lunch and um, you need to ensure that you've got enough set up and take down time and for volunteers to tidy away in between activities as well as everyone having a break themselves because it can be quite an intense time. Do you want to add something Rachel? Yeah. No that's fine so I just muted because my dog started barking. Um, yeah I think holiday clubs can seem quite daunting because you think oh again how, you, how am I going to fill three days or whatever it is with the with the amount of time but actually when you've got yourself a theme and you think about all the things that you might want to include and the different elements that you could use um, then that time gets filled really quickly when you factor in the breaks and, and how long things actually take how long it takes to move around a building if that's something that you need to do um, and you realize that actually the the possibilities of things that you can do um, to provide a level of continuity that you can't do on a week by week session if you only have an hour here and there um it's definitely so worthwhile doing a holiday club to do that and the relationships that you can build up with the children that take part over those those few days um are really important but making sure that um that i suppose when you are sitting for example doing activity with children um that you just take the time to talk to them um, on a normal level, not just giving instructions, but um, really taking the opportunity of having them there for that much longer to talk about what matters to them um, and, you know, build up that level of trust and friendship that you, you maybe wouldn't be able to have when everyone's running around on, a, on an evening because you're going from one thing to the next. Um, so, yes, it's important to kind of make sure that you know where your time slots are going and, and how things are going to fit together, um, but also being able to take the opportunity to, to take a bit longer overdoing things is um is really helpful for a holiday club yeah, and just to add to that really i suppose i think to the holiday clubs that i've been um involved in it's it's sometimes nice to perhaps encourage the um carers or parents to come along perhaps towards the end of the holiday club to perhaps be involved um, in some way or, from the, or another through the telling of stories or the showing of the things that the children have been sort of taking part in during the week okay So the next one we're going to look at um, is actually ideas and sometimes it can be quite daunting because there are so many different ideas that you may have and so many different resources out there that you have to choose from and it's difficult to know what's going to suit your group, what's going to suit yourself and your volunteers and sometimes the more you look the more you find and then it just gets very confusing. Um, 
We've got a number of slides coming up that's hopefully going to help you with this. Um, the slides that we're going to cover now are crafts, Bible study and course materials, lectionary based resources, music, games and full programmes. But if you do get stuck finding what you need, always just get in touch with us at the Children, Youth and Families team. And with our combined experience and our knowledge that we have, we all aim to access any further resources that we can and share with you what ideas um, that we can to help you with your planning. Um, crafts are one of the staples of um, many youth and children's um, activity groups. They're a great way of um, letting children explore their creative side. And there's also something about um, the way that we think when we're using our hands um, can help open up deeper conversations around the subjects that we might be talking about. Um, but coming up with crafts that different age children are going to find enjoyable, not too difficult and not too easy, um, can be a bit of a minefield. Um, also trying to make sure that you've got crafts that go alongside the subject that you're doing, so it's not just sort of a random craft stuck on there, um, is really important as well. So I'm going to stop sharing um, the presentation for a moment just so I can show you some of the resources that I've listed on this page to help you to understand um, what there is out there and how you can use them all. Um, so the first one that I've mentioned is Pinterest. Um, Pinterest has been going for a few years now when it first sort of came out. Um, everybody used Pinterest for everything. I think it's sort of died back a little bit now, but it is still really useful um, because there are hundreds of resources on it. Um, so the way that it works is that you search in what um, craft you're looking for. This also works for sort of activity sheets and things as well. Um, and then you can scroll down and see all the different um, crafts that people have put together. A lot of them will have instructions on them. Um, sometimes just having the idea is a really good way to start. For example, those bunnies, um, you could probably work out how to make that without following the instructions, but having some ideas is really useful. If you see ones that you want to do, you simply click on to save and um, it will show you which board you saved it to. You, um, you can create boards for different things. Um, so for example, if you run a Sunday school and an after school youth club, then you might want to save some things to your Sunday school group um, Sunday, some things to your after school group and uh, depending on what ages and group and um, what ages of children that you have coming to both of them. So those are some of the boards that I've got to check through what your pins are, just click on the board and then you can go back through and find all the ones that you saved. Um, for more information on um, how to do the craft that you've saved, just click on the link and it will tell you where it's come from. You can click on the link then to go to that site and it will give you all the instructions that um, the creator has come up with. So Pinterest is a very helpful one. Um, another site that I find very helpful is this blog, um, which is called Flame Creative Mid Children's Ministry. Um, and it's created by a um, uh, minister in the Church of England. A vicar in the Church of England. Um, and this is a really, really helpful one because it has all sorts of different ideas. So I have printable colouring sheets if you're just looking for something um, to use at the back of church, maybe. If you're looking for messy church ideas, it will have things like that as well. Um, if you're looking for crafts, it's got lots of crafts. But the thing that I find most helpful is this um, labels down the side because they go a lot more in depth than a lot of the ones you're looking for. Um, so if you wanted, I'm just going to stick with Easter because it's it's coming up for us now. There's three different categories for Easter. Um, so if you click on Easter Day, it will take you to all of the blogs that have been put up for different crafts on Easter Day. Lots of the blogs will include um, lots of different ideas. So this one's got prayers using an Easter egg, a colouring sheet, Play-Doh mats, which are really good for younger children. Um, this is, again, another good thing about this blog is that it really does go down a lot younger than some of the sites that you'll come across. Um, and then there'll be further posts which go a bit more in-depth into how to, to do all the different things. So Flame Creative Ministries is a very helpful um, site to have on your favourites. Um, another resource that's very useful are the Messy Church books. Um, so Messy Church has been going for a long time and the benefit of that is that there's now a whole series of books um, with different ideas. So you can kind of buy the, the generic Messy Church books. I think there's, there's three or four of them now which will have a whole range of 
different activities um, in, inside them, or they do specific seasonal ones. So you've got messy Christmas, messy nativity, messy Easter. Um, there's messy sciences now. So there's all sorts of um, really good crafts that have been compiled into those books. There's um, also messy church outdoors as well. Yes, yeah, there is. And they're, they're building new things all the time. They're building links with other countries. Um, so it's really exciting time to be involved in Messy Church if that's something that is interesting to you. Um, the books uh, uh, will be available from most booksellers and Christian booksellers, um, but we'll also, I think, have some that you could borrow in the Eastmore Resource Library, but I will come on to that a bit later on. Um, if you have a smaller group of children who you're working with, then um, Baker Ross is quite a useful site to have in mind. Um, they do pre-made um, craft packs. So if you've only got four or five children, then um, they're really good to just buy them. You have to do any preparation. You can just give, give one out to each child that you have. If you have bigger groups, they can get a bit more expensive, um, which is why you end up with a a lot of youth leaders spending hours cutting things out and preparing materials. Um, but for smaller groups, and if you have a budget, then Baker Ross is um, a really helpful one to have a look at. And they have a whole variety. I've just clicked on the Easter resources there um, to keep the theme going and, and show you what sort of things they do. Um, another uh, site that's quite helpful is Illustrated Ministry. Um, so, these are um, lots of kind of colouring posters, colouring pages, that kind of thing, uh, which look a little bit like that. Um, so they do children's bulletins, which you can put out um, in churches. So if you if you know you're going to have a couple of children in church, but you maybe don't have the resources or the, the manpower to um, do a Sunday school, then this is something really good to just have on hand that if you do have children, um, particularly who are that little bit older um, who are happy to sit there coloring and doing activity sheets, then these are really good. Um, there's a whole variety of them as well. So they have different seasonal ones. Um, they're also really good for adults as well, actually. Um, if adults struggle to concentrate, I know that there's a lot of adults in my church who do. They're not just for children. Um, sitting and doing mindful coloring during the service um, is a really helpful thing to do for adults um, and young people. Um, because the way that you that you listen, if you're the kind of person that gets distracted easily, your hands are being distracted while your mind then is free to concentrate on what is happening in the service. Um, so it's not just colouring to keep children quiet, uh, but mindful colouring to help children engage in a different way with um, the subject that's happening in church um, or to help adults who maybe find it a bit more difficult to concentrate as well um because the way that we that we live life now is not one in which a lot of people have to sit and concentrate on somebody talking for a long time um which i know you're doing now but a lot of adults find it difficult as well as young people uh, they also do family resources as well that you can just download um to use at home so that's a really good one to have in mind um and you can also i think they also do posters don't they rachel that you yeah. can there to make a big display so that's quite nice for group work yeah so do some very so coloring pages and posters which you can buy some of them you can just download and um, they've got some free resources um but they are all there on the, the shop um yeah have a, have a look through at some point because they are they're really beautifully done and they're really helpful ones to have um so that is illustrated ministry um, the last one to show you for crafts at the moment um, is one that if you're a teacher you will already know about, um, which is Twinkle. Uh, Twinkle has a whole load of um, different activities and colouring sheets, um, mainly activity sheets. They're designed primarily for the use in schools, um, but they can be really helpful to use in group settings as well. They also have activity ideas, um, so for children in need they quite often team up um, with the BBC to produce um, activities and, and work uh, worksheets and things. Um, but if you look at their um, topic and event ca calendar, you can see that there's a lot of um, the events that as the children, youth and family team, we would um, encourage you to get involved with. But if you don't know how, then Twinkle is a good place to start. Um, and also the, the good thing about Twinkle is not only do they do different age groups, so you've got primary and secondary resources, they also have resources in Welsh 
Um, so if that's something that you need for your church, then they are available in Welsh as well. Um, so you need to sign up to an account to um, to use them, but the it's one of these sites that's got different levels of accounts, so you can get a free one. If it's find something that you find you use all the time, then um, if your church has a budget, you could see if they would invest in a paid account as well. Um, so yeah, Twinkle is a very good one to have in mind too. Um, let me go back to... I quite like Twinkle for um, Saints Days. So recently there was lots of information on there for St. Doinwins and they'll have lots on there for St. David's Day. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah, they, they are very good for um, particularly things that are celebrated more widely than just inside the church. Um, seasonal stuff is, is a really good place to go to for them. And even if you don't end up not using their actual resources, just getting the ideas from there can be can be really helpful. Um, so crafts is only one element of your group. Um, sometimes it can be easier rather than um, kind of doing odd weeks here and there that come together to make a programme um, to run a particular course for a series of a few weeks. Um, it might be that you start that course um, specifically for that reason. For example, you can invite young people to Youth Alpha, um, which is, is a series that can run um, from kind of six to I think about nine or ten weeks, depending on which sessions you use. Um, but it's a good way of inviting young people in who are asking questions. Um, and then as you build up that relationship with them during the course, it may mean that you can move on to the basis of a youth group when the course is finished. Um, that's a similar story for um, both Youth Emmaus and the Bible course. Um, these are all courses that are designed to last for a few weeks for, for young people who are questioning faith and questioning life. Um, they're, they're specifically aimed at, at that sort of demographic. Um, but the way that a course works like that is that you, you do build up relationships, relationships with young people. So they're quite good to um, just start up a youth ministry. Um, some other resources that are there are the Scripture Union resources. They do a series of um, magazines um, and course materials that run over um, a few weeks. Um, Urban Saints Energize is another one um, that's a paid subscription, um, but they have a, a huge range of um, ready put together sessions where you can um, kind of make them up yourself with the elements that will work well for your group, whether that's um, down to the age demographic that you have or the resources that you have um, or the particular um, kind of ideas that you're trying to teach them. Um, and then download that session and you're good to go with it, um, aside from any preps that you might need to do to run that. Um, but there's, they uh, will have kind of standalone sessions and, you know, two or two, three, four week series um, that you can pick and run for a few weeks and then move on to something else. Um, and it's quite easy to be led by your young people when you're when you're doing it like that. Um, another good one is the Tiddlywinks books. Um, I've only got uh, this one with me at the moment, which is stories and pictures, um, but they also have Tiddlywinks, um, the big red book, the big orange book, uh, the big purple book, all sorts of coloured books. Uh, which a big are, blue book. <laughs> big blue book, yeah, they're, they're all in there, um, which are full of um, session resources for running uh, sessions with younger children. So um, the the preschool age group um, and they will include um, songs which are quite often sort of new words or biblical words or bible story based words um, to nursery rhymes that the children will already know the tunes so they can sort of join in a little bit or have some level of, um, of you know being able to understand what's going on um, they'll include crafts they'll include things you can talk to the parents about um, ways of praying with with younger children um, so they're really good ones to have um, this one is uh, uh, just stories and pictures. So if you already have um, your program uh, for your toddler group set up and you just want something to introduce uh, maybe a Christian element, um, then this sort of book is quite good because you can just go through, choose a story each week um, and have a good way of telling the story to the children um, and just a way that they can get involved with it. 
very simple coloring sheets um like this one are really good for people younger children who don't have uh the ability to draw particularly well between lines um but also you could print them out and laminate them and use them as play-doh mats or scribble mats or whatever you want to do as well so those are really helpful we mentioned earlier if you are starting an evangelistic group that you might want to start with um a subject that will interest young people that you have in your area um, and then introduce Christian elements to it as you go through. So some of the, the series that people have done um, with that in mind have been Harry Potter, The Simpsons, um, sporting ones, football uh, is, a, is the obvious one there, um, and films such as The Greatest Showman as well. Um, I just brought one of these books to show you. There's a few um, of these around, which are 12 sessions on faith for nine to 13 year olds. This one is based on The Simpsons. Um, I know they also definitely have Harry Potter and football. Um, and the way it works is it will look at um, part of a, a Simpsons episode for this one each week, and then it will bring um, some games, um, some uh, kind of reflections, things to do with your younger people to relate what they've seen or what they've done in with um, the Bible and with faith. Um, so that's these are really good ones to use with a sort of younger teen, older child age range. Um, and there's a few of these around. So have a look for those. The Bible course and Youth Emmaus, um, I've already mentioned, they're very similar um, in the way that you'd use them to Youth Alpha and um, their discipleship programs for young people who are already searching for faith. Um, you can also get a variety of lectionary resources. Um, so uh, I think probably a lot of churches in this diocese will um, plan their worship according to the lectionary. The benefit of using lectionary resources in your youth and children's work is that when families go home, the children and the parents are talking about the same things. They've both just heard the same story. They've both been taught um, probably a similar lesson, but just in, in slightly different ways. Um, so the kind of joint understanding from both age groups can be really helpful in the whole family learning a lesson about faith. Um, so there's a, few, a three that I've mentioned there. Um, Roots is a magazine um, that comes out every two months, I think. Um, and there's a children and youth and an adult and all age version. And it comes as a magazine. Or I think there's probably a digital version of it as well. But um, we have a, a stash of these um, that will be kept in the Eastmore Centre if you want to just kind of go through a backlog to look at previous years. Um, or if you get there in time to plan ahead for this year's. Um, these are the March and April 22 issues. So these are actually up to date for anyone who is interested. Um, and these will contain uh, options for your session. So it will give you options for a children's session, ways of um, sharing the word, ways of um, responding, um, songs that you can, can sing, um, and then ways of gathering and going out um, as well as, as crafts and things alongside that as well. Um, and then there's a, a young people session as well, um, which is a little bit more in depth. Um, the adult on all, on all age version um, also includes ideas for your all age worship. So we'll have sermon ideas, Bible notes, um, hymns and songs for you to use in worship. So if you're clergy and want to look at how to do an all an actually all age service, um, not a children's service, then this one is a really good one to use. Um, these are subscription based. Um, we have a diocesan subscription, which means that you can borrow them from us. Um, and if it's something that you're finding really useful, then again, see if you can look into your church um, getting either one or both of those copies. The subscription kind of works on the basis of how many copies you need. So if it's just for the vicar to plan the all age service, then it's a very simple one. You just get one copy of the all age. If it's for your entire children, youth and families team to plan every session in the week, as well as the all age worship, then you might need just a few more copies, a few more logins um, and both magazines. But there's loads of options there for how you subscribe to that one. Just as well that Roots also offers some free subscription sort of sessions every sort of twice a year. They'll send through um, a little bit of information saying you can sort of like sign up for a short period of time. So it's worth the trial. Yeah, and then we'll always put that into the um, the weekly newsletter um, when those are coming up. And they also have some faith at home resources as well, if that's something that you would find useful. And um, just have a look on their website, which is on the slide. 
Um, another useful lectionary resource, um, which again is from Script Union, um, are these all age lectionary services books. Um, there's three of them for years A, B and C. They are purple, red and green, hence why it's a different picture on the slide as it is in my hand. Um, and these are again are really good for all age worship. Um, each week will give you um, some Bible notes, um, a way of beginning the service in an interactive way, a way of retelling the Bible reading so that it's understandable for all ages, um, some ideas for a talk, a prayer activity, um, some more formal prayers and ways of ending the service, and then some helpful extras such as music and song ideas um, and statements of faith and ways of opening um, questions with your congregation if that's the way that you do your worship. Um, so again, for all age worship, um, these are really good ones, more for the worship than for Sunday schools, um, but they're useful to have sitting on your shelf if you're struggling a little bit to work out how to incorporate that into your um, into your Sunday worship. Um, the last one to mention, which, oh, one that isn't on the slide, um, similar to the Scripture Union one, um, is these are uh, Creative Ideas for Children's Worship um, by Sarah Lenton. Um, I don't, these are from Canterbury Press. I don't know where I got this copy from, but they again are really useful um, for ways of doing all age worship. Um, so again, for in your service rather than in your Sunday school. So clergy particularly, um, all age lectionary services and creative ideas for children's worship are both really helpful ones to have around. Um, one that is more Sunday school based are the Scripture Union magazines. Um, so they look a little bit like this and the different ones that I've mentioned there, Bubbles, Splash, Extreme and The Grid are for different age groups. So Bubbles is sort of under fives, Splash was sort of five to eight, Extreme, which is this one, is eight to elevens and then The Grid um, is for older teenagers. Um, these are really good if you have the same young people coming to your Sunday school every week. Um, so you can have their own copy and then when they come you go to whatever session that you're doing um there's leaders notes that go alongside this which can be downloaded um so the young person kind of does the activities in their book but there's also things that build on them um in the accompanying notes uh this is an older one they don't do them as a weekly um actually this is april to june so it's a uh, kind of termly magazine anymore instead they're done as a yearly compendium um, but if you go onto the Scripture Union website, then you'll be able to see where those are. Um, but these are really good for helping young people to develop their own personal faith. Um, and they have, yeah, a good range of activities and, and things to in there. And it saves you having to print things out every week because it's already done there for you. OK, where are we now? Um, so if music is an important part of your worship, which you know it is for a lot of churches, um, there's a whole lot of musical resources that you might find useful for your worship um, that draw on a variety of different traditions. Um, so for choral music, RSCM is the, the one to go to. Um, Claire, I don't know if you want to say anything about RSCM. Yeah, just as well as the usual sort of um, items, it's good to keep a track of their Facebook page and um, different updates. They've put together a Jubilee song um, and they share other events that may be opportunities for children and adults alike um, to further their music abilities, really. Um, RSCM provide a lot of resources as well for children's choirs. Um, so if that is something that you have in your area, no um, Brecon Cathedral have got a very strong children's choir um, and RSCM have got some fantastic resources um, and kind of awards programmes where they can earn medals and things um, which includes a faith element that has to be kind of completed before they can earn that medal so it's not just based on the singing it's also an understanding of the liturgy and um, and how that relates to your own personal faith as well um, so those are really good resources to use. Um, out of the Ark and Same Boat Music are um, companies that produce children's um, praise and worship um, music. So that's mainly um, CDs and things. So either uh, good for using in your children's groups. Um, so this is we're going to learn this song and sing this song this week and having the ability to play that, um, or as part of your family worship as well. And um, they're good for introducing children to um, more praise and worship themes. 
Um, Becky George is a really useful um, one to know about, um, particularly if you're looking at trying to make your church more inclusive, both of adults and children. Um, I'm just going to come out of this again to show you. So Becky does um, videos on YouTube on her channel um, where she signs the song um, with Makaton signing. Um, so I'm just going to show you a short clip of this one so you can see what that looks like. Um, so as you can see, she signs very clearly um, with the Makaton sign language and there's also sub subtitles there as well. So if you do have people um, who find it easier to communicate in that way, um, then Becky has got a whole range of different um, videos. So they're not just um, children's worship songs. Uh, there's also a huge number of hymns that she's got on there as well. Um, basic signs I think she's got for um, using junior liturgy. Um, and readings as well. So if that is something that affects your church, then it's really useful to know about uh, Becky. Just search for Becky in Becky George on YouTube and you'll come up with her channel um, and you can subscribe there and access those videos. Um, so those are really helpful. Just going back to this one again. Um, Doug Hawley is another one, uh, I suppose, again, more similar to Out of the Ark and Same Boat Music, um, who over the years has, has produced a lot of children's praise and worship resources. Um, so have a look at the website, which is Dougie Doug Doug, who, uh, which might be how you know Doug better. I know it's a particular generation was all about Dougie Doug Doug, but he's still going. Um, and there is a load of resources on his website. Um, if you are the um, have the ability to play music yourself then and are looking to try some more modern worship music than the Soul Survivor songbooks and also the Spring Harbour songbooks are a really good place to start and um, they come in quite big compendiums um, and are full of lots of songs they'll have the chords um, and the um, the words in the book and they normally come with a cd which will have the sheet music and also because they're old school these ones have acetate masters and um, so if you're the type of church that still has a um overhead projector that you use regularly in worship it will give you the acetate masters i don't know what more you could want um otherwise if you use a projector then the words are there for you to project onto your screen or if you're still producing worship online um then those are there as well um, the final um, thing to mention is um, if you're using YouTube, there are um, a lot of places that you can go to to find good quality um, children's and young people's worship music. Um, Hillsong Kids have got a really good variety um, and Hillsong will kind of grow up into adult Hillsong, which is more of the modern worship music. Um, Spring Harvest have got, you know, years worth under their belt. So have a look at them. Um, All Star Kids is a bit newer, um, but has um, got a lot more popular recently. They have kind of grown up to have their own um, radio platform and things as well, so they're definitely worth looking into. Um, one of my personal favourites is Renko Kids. Their music is um, is not at all simplistic. It's a lot of it's quite up to, upbeat. Um, it's really good for kind of moving along to, um, but it doesn't. Uh, it's very theologically in depth as well so um, there's a depth there which you don't get with necessarily with all other children's music so Renko kids are definitely worth having a look at they don't have a huge amount at the moment there's only one album but I think that's something that as the Rend collective I want to say band it's probably the easiest word to use there um, they'll be looking at doing some more in the future um, another good one is I Sing Pop um, which has I think is also used in um, quite a few schools around the area as well. Um, I know in 
the first lockdown, they were producing a lot of new material to support schools with their collective worship that schools are putting out onto the internet for children. Um, so they've got you know a variety of different action songs. Um, they'll have more accurate signing actions to their action songs as well. Um, and just a huge variety of stuff there um, where you're getting children moving around during their worship. Um, so yeah, icing prop on YouTube. Um, just search for any of those and you should come up with a whole variety of stuff to have a look at. Um, games are a really good way of um, breaking up your session, getting moving if kids are getting a bit restless, um, if you sat down for too long, um, even just in all fairness, standing up and get everyone to have a nice big wiggle can be a really good way of um, calming down those children who just can't sit still. Because um, there's always some, um, and so yeah, doing some move around is really good. Um, also, a lot of games will make a teaching point while you're, te while you're doing them as well, particularly when it comes just things around teamwork is really important um, things to be teaching our young people. So there's a few websites there um, that have some ideas for, for games. Um, to be fair, just Googling games is normally a, a really good way to go, um, particularly if you need to be specific about what your needs are. So, for example, if you only have a small inside space, um, and you want to be able to play a game, then searching for inside games with small groups will bring you a lot of results. Um, but at the same time, you don't need to find new games every week. The old, the old ones are classics still. Um, so don't be afraid to play games that you remember playing in your youth group, um, that you used to play in school, that you remember your children playing, um, that you've played in other groups. That's absolutely fine as well. Um, and the better you know the games in that way, the more fun they'll be for children. Whereas if you're trying to do a new game that's a bit complicated and you're struggling through the rules, um, you're better off playing something that you know how to play and the kids can get stuck in and run around um, and do it like that. Getting to know you games are also really good. Um, if you've got new a children starting or a new volunteer, it's, it's quite nice even just to sit down in a circle and go around, use the first letter of people's names and then an animal or what they like doing. Just find people um, of each other's names and it can quite often turn into a bit of a fun game then as well. Yeah. Yeah, there's all sorts of, of games that you can play with groups. Um, so yeah, and just if you're the kind of person who's created them, make them up as you go along. That's absolutely fine as well. As long as everyone's safe and having fun, that is the most important thing. Um, so yeah, enjoy games. Games are a good way. Um, just one more thing to mention. Um, if you're looking for a full program um, that you can just pick up and, and take away with you, um, there are a few options out there. Scripture Union, I've mentioned already because um, they do do a huge range of resources. Um, so if you're looking to run a holiday club, then Scripture Union will probably have a holiday club. If you're looking to run a football camp, then they have resources to run a football camp. If you want to run a uh, video game club, then they have resources for that. Um, so if, uh, if you're looking particularly for a seasonal club or something to run over a holiday um, or online sessions as well, then having a look through the Scripture Union website is always a really good place to start. Um, one thing that I found over the last few years is that the Boys Brigade have um, a huge range of activities and themed programmes that are accessible to anybody, not just um, Boys Brigade leaders. Um, so I'm just going to take you onto their website to show you how that works, because there, there is so much there um, that it can be quite useful to just uh, see how it works. Um, so their filters uh, is probably the, the easiest place to start. The age groups is um, named by the, the groups that they run, but um, also has the ages there. So if we're looking for a, a June, 8 to 11 year olds, we're going to do an indoor activity and we want to do a game, then that's the filters that you would do. And then it will come up with all the games that, in fact, just lots and lots and lots and lots of games. Um, if you click on one, it will take you to a very nice shiny um, activity card. I'll tell you how long it will take to play, um, what resources you need to play it with, the aim of the game, and then a card with how to play the game and some tips around playing it and quite often some different options for how to play the game as well. Um, it will also tell, give you some ideas to take it further and some hints on how to keep people safe. <coughs> um, if you're looking for more 
are so the the different options that they have um are get adventurous so quite often those are going outside or trying new things get creative so that'll be your crafts and um, get into the bible with your um particular um bible lessons or learning about different biblical characters or um biblical themes um get involved will be um getting involved with your wider community um, and get learning will be learning about it i mean it could be anything but something that uh they maybe not won't know already um i'll just give you some examples to explain what we're talking about so um sort the year was an activity i used recently um at the start of the new year it was trying to get them to put the different holidays that we have during the year in order and i can tell you that is a lot more difficult than you just thought it'd be so they all learned things about things like when saint andrew's day is and who is saint andrew um but different seasonal things and um, there's you can learn about the olympics learn how to do some makaton um those are a really good one and then if you're looking to get into the bible um they'll have a whole load there as well so as you can see it's not just bible stories there's also um biblical themes and how to um do different activities to bring that that god slot in and um, they also do do themed programs so for those it will be the whole program will be already there ready for you on um on a sheet and you can just pick, pick the ones that you need um the final one to mention is mark griffiths who you may know from um saint padams um he's also been a uh, part of new wine for a long time um over the years has produced a few books that have a whole year's worth of teaching for five to twelve year olds they're quite big books sort of a4 size and quite thick um the books that we have in the eastmore resource library are destinate fusion and impact um and you literally have 52 by um sessions in the book so you can just borrow the book for the whole year take it away with you um they'll be split into kind of themes and um, so you'll have a few weeks i know there was one um that i've used before on mountains so it talks about the different mountains in the bible um so you have like mount hebron and carmel and the stories that relate so there, there is a theme that brings them together um, but they're all very distinct groups so those are really good um they are available in the eastmore resource library or will be when we've managed to sort it out um or they can be purchased quite cheaply as used copies on amazon they are about 20 pounds if you buy them new but they're about five if you buy them second hand um and they're quite big so second hand is probably just as well anyway um okay where are we um also as a diocese um we do try and put together things ourselves that can support you um on a weekly basis or as and when you need it um so fish tales is put together by sean parkhouse um, that's a sort of way of having your sunday school at home um so it's a downloadable magazine that's out every few weeks um and has things that you can do activities and um things for you to do at home if you can't get to your local Sunday school or if your Sunday school hasn't reopened, um, that's one way to go. Um, Kamina Bach is produced by Sean Smith. Um, it's uh, also a collection of different activities around a different theme that comes out monthly and is also bilingual. Um, so that's a really good one to have access to. And I think she puts it onto the Children, Youth and Families, Bradner and Bilf. Facebook page and that that also quite often gets shared onto the Swanbreck Ideas Exchange Facebook page. Um, so keeping on our Facebook pages is the best way to find those. Um, Wild Country Kids, I don't know if you want to say something about that, Claire. Yeah, okay. So those are activities that you can connect to spirituality, forest church, muddy church, outdoor church. And it's quite handy to just have a think of different ways that you can reach out to children and adults, families. Um, during the pandemic, thinking about the outdoors, your church and caring for God's creation. Well, and as we come into the summer months, um, that's particularly helpful. Um, and we really would encourage you to get outside as much as you can, um, both because it's safer when there's COVID around and also because um, particularly for a lot of our rural churches, you have all this amazing um nature on your doorstep. And it's a really fantastic way of connecting with God, particularly for for people who don't feel as comfortable inside a church building or if your church building isn't as well resourced as you'd like it to be um, make the most of the outdoors um, as a team we also produce a newsletter every two weeks that comes out on a monday morning and that will contain um 
any events of training that both we're putting on and also that we've found out um, from around the diocese and around the province um, and also into, into England as well. Um, any new resources that have come out that we think you might find helpful, any training that's on um, or children and youth events, um, we put into that newsletter. Um, it just comes to your inbox. You can flick through it, click on whatever's useful and then carry on. Um, if you don't get that already and you'd like to, then just send us an email and I can add you onto that mailing. Um, any resources that we put together, we put onto our um, children, youth and families page on the Dusselson website. Um, it contains all of our frequently asked questions pages. Um, it's going to be containing soon a lot of the paperwork, which we're going to go through in the next session. Um, and any events and things that we have upcoming will be on the website as well, as long as our contact, as long with our contact details, if you can't find them for any reason. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's always worth following your local children, youth and families deanery Facebook pages. Um, the details for that will be at the end of this slide. Um, we quite often put resources onto the Children, Youth and Families Office's YouTube channel, um, which again, I think the link is at the end of the, of the presentation. Um, and you'll be able to find a backlog of um, weekly worship, of our Christmas and Easter services, um, of the Advent and Lent courses that we've done, and then any odd things that we've done in between that will go onto our YouTube channel as well. And the final thing to mention with us some resources is that we do have a resource library at the Eastmore Centre. Um, unfortunately, there was some water damage in the Eastmore Centre over lockdown, so we're currently in the process of reorganising everything, um, sorting out all the books in there, and we'll be, we currently have a uh, an Excel database to say everything that should be in the library. So we're going through that and working out what is still in the library and what isn't um, and what's been added to it. And then we're going to put it onto another database that's a bit easier to use. So if anybody would like to borrow any of those books, then they will be available um, from the Eastmore Library in Swansea. Um, there's also, as well as, as book resources, we have prayer spaces resources in both um, Swansea and up in the Dosserton office in Brecon. Um, so these include uh, tents and trees and lava lamps and post-it notes, um, fairy lights, all the random little bits and pieces that you might need for doing a prayer space in your local school or your community. Um, we probably have filed away somewhere. So if that's something that you'd like to consider um, and you don't have the finances to, to buy it yourself or it's not worth it for a one-off, um, then do speak to us because the likelihood is that we'll have it stored away somewhere that you can borrow um, either from Swansea or Brecon. Okay. So we've given you lots and lots of information today. Um, if you do have any questions, please do just send us an email at kifo.swanbreck at cnw.org.uk and we will help you as much as we can. Um, otherwise, just use our contact details at the end of the presentation. We hope you've enjoyed listening and finding out more. We're going to be running two more sessions and it'd be great if you can join us. So session two is Administration Essentials. This is where you can find out all about the paperwork and forms um, that are appropriate for use within your area. The date for this training is Thursday the 10th of March, 7.30 to 8.30. And then session three, tips for running the session, and that date is Thursday the 5th of May, 7.30 to 8.30. We look forward to welcoming you at those sessions. Please do keep in touch with us. Um, we try and communicate as much as possible, but we'd be happy to receive emails from you. We also have our page set up on the website and our Facebook details are all on this slide below. So it would be great to have your communication, questions, comments and support. Thank you for listening.